Welcome to the Nightly Rant. I'm Mike. And I'm Toria. This is the show where we talk about the awful things that have happened in our day, the awesome things that have happened in our day, and all the things in between. Thanks for listening, and we truly hope you enjoy. So, people just don't ever disappoint. They really don't. It's true. You can always count on people to be the same colossal moron they were when you first experienced them. It's insane to me how different a lot of people are. Like, this whole situation that happened today and has been happening where people put words in your mouth and, I don't know act childish and then and then turn around and make it sound like because you're running for office you owe them something <laughs> you experienced a lot of these people lately and then you post this on my wall i post it on my wall and ask a question if people understand why and the answers i get are so weird what do you mean well like just almost like people think it's okay to treat me that way people are ridiculous and I mean, it pisses me off because what really they're saying is we're going to keep poking and prodding at you because we know you're not able to explode at us. Because if you explode at us, then we can tell everybody, oh, look, see, this is why you don't want to elect this person. But what they don't realize is that I actually find it sad and funny that they do what they do, that they waste their freaking time. Doing this. I mean, I would literally have forgotten they even existed by now if they had just shut up and stopped bugging us. Right? Like, if they wouldn't if they wouldn't pop up every five minutes. Oh, by the way, you suck. Our group is so fabulous. And it's like, it's irritating because it sort of comes down to... We're going to harass you as much as we want. We're going to say whatever lies we want. We're going to make up any stories we want. Just because, hey, we have our big group. What you, what you going to do about it? Right. It's just asinine. I mean, Very I, asinine. And I was thinking about, like, a city like Huntington Beach, their Facebook group. Judging by the numbers, it's about a third of their citizens. Yeah. That one's like a sixth or a seventh, actually a seventh of the citizens. Oh, my bet is she's reached 50% of the citizens, but kicked them out. Well, yeah. Like I said, looking at the, I was looking to see if they had like a official logo because I wanted to use it for a purpose. <laughs> Um, that's all I'm going to say. And they don't, they're using, they got like some kind of cover photo up there. Um, and if I remember right, it was advertising something, but in any event, oh, yeah, they've been advertising like youth sports. Yeah. Slightly. So in any event, I, uh, I was reading her rules and I'm going to go there now while we're on here and I'm going to look at the rules and I'm going to tell you how many times it talks about getting banned. Right away in the first sentence, it's in all capitals. Please read all rules below before posting. Do not post a response until you read all comments. All comments. If your comment is negative, it will be removed and you might be removed from the group without warning. <coughs> That's one time. Okay. That's one time. Okay. Then it comes down. To talk about um, one ad per week. Talk about restaurants, but be nice. Do not give out personal information or you will be removed. Second time. You can't give out personal information? Second time. What if you want to then, give somebody your phone number so they can give you a ring-a-ding? Then, Ow. let's see. And there was three other times. So that's five times that wow. she talks about in like a four paragraph rule setup that 
you're going to get removed if you don't follow my rules. And that's, that's the thing, like, <coughs> excuse me. It's just asinine. Captain Dingus, in response to Tina, making that comment that, well, people are just upset because we enforce the rules. And she makes a great point. What about when they don't follow the rules? They never follow the rules. Let's be real now. I mean, it's why, for instance, I like to post our podcast I like to have the freedom to post political, my political stuff, not political opinions, but my right. campaign right. stuff. I like the freedom to post that there. Uh-huh. So consequently, I have a difficult time with like Benji who posts all the time. And now the only reason that I bl- agree with you 100% on making people like that remove their previous post is because his is the same every single time he posts it. It's right. not like it's not like he's a hairstylist and one day he posts about a special on a haircut and another day he posts a special about a blowout and then another day he posts a special about manicure while you if you get a haircut. You know what I'm saying? Like a different service each time. There's no reason to delete those because it's a different service each time that you're it's advertising. It's not the exact same piece of text. Right. Repeated over. But and when over you again. repeat the same thing over and over right. and over. Right. That needs to be deleted. But that's why I don't give him such a hard time. Because if I'm going to post self-helping, you know, selfish things, he should be allowed to as well. Well, of course. He's definitely allowed to have it. It's just a... And you know what? Give him credit. We asked one time. And, and he did it. he's been fabulous about taking yeah. care of his older post. Yeah. And you know what? And if he forgets once or twice, I really don't care. If I see it and I know there's a we new one, we take care of it. I yeah, just get rid of it. There's like, no reason to ban him for it, which is what no. would happen. Because you know, not following the rules has its consequences. Why would I ban somebody for promoting their business and trying <coughs> to make a living? Like, come on now, we both know that guy's gotten some business from our group. Yes, good for him too. More power to him. So, like, dude, go away. I just feel like those people just need to get a life. Yes, their own. Like, the the irony was not lost on me about a person who continually complains about how much time it takes from their personal life to run a Facebook group, (laughs) has the gall to say, whoa, for someone running a political campaign, he sure has time to post on Facebook. Right? Just because Um, you have time management skills, unlike some people. Well, that's what's funny. When you're sitting in a city council meeting right. and you're listening and that's all you're doing is listening because that's all that's happening is people are talking. Right. I don't have to look at what they're saying to Sad. be able to hear it. So I can also post things on Facebook at the same time. Right. What do I care? And I mean, maybe they don't fathom the ability to listen and type out something at the same time, but Most people I don't. do. Like the guy complaining to to Josh about how he posts all the time, so he mustn't have a job. He points out that I can type like a hundred words a minute, <laughs> right? Like, first off, who are you, the post police? Like, what? Even if, even if, BT Dubs, this isn't true, of course. What if Josh didn't have a job and what he liked to do with his time was post on Facebook? Who cares? What the fuck business is that of anybody else's? Well, yes. And and that's exactly the point. We've talked about something similar previously. I mean, that's the thing about podcasts about life is the topics do come up often. People are but, shit all the time, of course. But people on social media are such hypocrites and such, like, snakes. Colossal weasels. Because, you know... Weasel Maximus. They take advantage of the fact that Brad most likely won't remove you from his group. And they take advantage of that by trolling other people. Right. And it's I'm gonna bet you and I and I was gonna bet you that it wouldn't be long before um Tina got removed from the other group. Well after what she but said. But then but then she took herself out of the group. But, I mean, I was going to bet you it won't be long. Because she post specifically said that this isn't your group, so you can't do anything about it. 
And we all know that we know other people who have been banned for comments they've said in that group. Right. I mean, And I think that that's just a sign of someone's stupidity. And here's why I say that. Let's be honest. If, if we were that kind of person and we saw someone in the open forum say something about us while they were a member of our group. There wouldn't be anybody in our we group. Wouldn't be, well, we wouldn't be stupid enough to get kicked them out of the group for that because that makes you look like a censoring moron. Because this I, person is, you know, they're in your group, so now you own them. You're not allowed to speak anywhere else. I own you. Don't you know this? So asinine. Like and they don't own you. Can like, you. stick that up here. You know what? They don't own you. Stick but here's the thing. The sun, don't but, shine, their friends. but here's the thing. What I would do, if that bothered me that someone said that, and I wanted to wield my power, uh-huh. it would be easy to find a reason or bait someone into a reason to kick them out of our group. They could say something, I'd be like, oh my god, I am so upset by your comment. You just made me butt hurt. Guess what? You violated the no butt hurt rule. Boot. See ya. And guess what? Then it would be debatable about whether I was correct to do that, or was it really butt hurt, or whatever. But the point is, I would have booted the person for violation of a rule. I wouldn't boot them for something they said in the other group, even though the underlying reason is what they said in the other group. I have to interject. Interject all you want. My favorite part about our don't make other people butt hurt rule is that the butt hurt person has to admit they're butt hurt. Well, yeah, because otherwise it's fully up to us to say, well, I guess they weren't butt hurt. Right? Too bad. That's, Can't do it. I think that's the best part because oversensitive people will never admit that they were butt hurt. Yeah, well, so, I think. That's awesome. It's just it's just an extra bo- it's an extra added bonus. Yep. I hear you. I think that um I think that people need to just freaking grow up. <laughs> you know what's interesting? Okay, so I'm in a crap load of Facebook groups at this point. Sure. And that theme comes up a lot in all of them. Like, every single, well, at least once a week, because I don't want to say every single day because I don't want to be wrong. (laughs) At least once a week, there is a post from one of my groups about somebody, I've had enough of this crap, I'm leaving. Okay. So why do we announce that we're leaving? Goodbye. We won't miss you. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Like, shut up. But, like, why would we care? Like, exactly. Why do you have to announce it? Why does anybody give a shit that you're leaving? Nobody gives a shit that you're leaving. Not one person. What do they expect? People to chase them down and beg them not to go? Like, okay, that person that says that sends that post is never somebody who's a great contributor to the group. It's always somebody really weaselly that nobody likes. But think about that. <clears throat> you just made me something dawn on me that makes it even worse than I thought it was. Okay. That person has never been moved enough to comment on anything in the group. Maybe they've been moved to comment on like a half a percent of what gets posted. Right. Okay. But you're right. They're usually the people who have never said Jack Squat Diddley before. How about that? lady that went off in our group and blocked a whole bunch of people right never had commented before before. that was her first comment i checked it was her first comment it makes her angry and she loses her absolute shit yes blocks all of the admins but that's my point it clearly pisses people off enough that they go off the deep end they don't only they don't only just not they don't only just not Post because they're, I don't know, scared, shy, whatever. They don't post because it doesn't move them. They don't care. They're numb to it. And then some stupid thing riles them up and puts a stick up their butt. And suddenly they're like, oh, I'm pissed off and I'm leaving this group. So go. Don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out. 
Right. Why does anyone care about someone leaving a group? That person that you're talking about specifically, the one who lost her shit in our group, is definitely the type of person that would have just let that post go on and on, and then she would have posted a big butthurt rant and then left the group. Yes. I just beat her to it because she blocked us. Well, and even the whole messaging back and forth thing that you guys did, she was nuts. (laughs) And like... (laughs) Don't get me wrong, people. I'm not saying that this is an insane person running around society. I mean that she just lost she it. totally lost all control over an issue, and she was dead wrong. She was, like, accusing people of teaching intolerance in their homes. I don't think if you talk to my kids that they would tell you that I teach them intolerance. Quite the opposite. <laughs> I forgot about her until tonight. That's how significant she was. But that's the thing. She called me a bitch in private message, and that's how significant she is to me, that I forgot about her. But that's the thing, though, (laughs) that, that I'm trying to get across here. One thing moves them so much that they go off the deep end and fall off the cliff. Like, what the hell is that all about? I don't know. I don't know. What do you need? I don't get it. I don't understand why one little thing will set people off. I don't get it. And usually it's a fairly insignificant thing that sets them off too. Not that the discussion as a whole was insignificant. But her take on what was being said. It was like. It would be like if you completely worship someone. And you believe nothing but good things about that person. And all of a sudden people were saying bad things about that person. You would be scratching and clawing to get them to shut up. And the more they say, the worse you would feel. That's how she reacted to that. Do you want to know what I think makes her contribution insignificant? She didn't contribute anything besides insults. Well, yeah, that's true, too. And that's what set her off to block me, was I pointed out that her insult doesn't really help further the discussion. Right. But hey, while we're talking about that, I want to rant a little bit about blocking people on social media. (laughs) What kind of a toddler just blocks people for no good reason? And I'm sorry, but I don't agree with them. It's not a good reason. They irritate me when they post. Also not a good reason. They're blatantly insulting you? There's your reason. Yes. And you know what? There's so many other tools to keep the ability for you to read their stuff, but them not to read your stuff. So many tools for that. That don't be a child and block people. Because that's the problem with society. What do we always say? Like the man said today. It's refreshing that, and we need somebody in office who actually looks at the facts and researches those facts to come up with a, with a solution that is not based on their political ideology. In other words, a conservative might come up with a liberal approach and vice versa. Right. That's the way it should be because you're supposed to find the right answer, not the answer your party supports. Well, and of course there's always multiple multiple answers to any issue when you're in government style things. So if you're sure. Republican, you're going to pick the more Republican leaning solution. But just because it's a Republican leaning solution doesn't mean it's a completely Republican solution. But that's the problem. Is that they do make decisions based off of their ideology. And a lot of times their own personal beliefs are different. But yet they're voting the party line. That, to me, indicates that there's some corruption there. Like, somebody's getting paid money and they don't want to lose that position. So they do whatever it takes to hang on to that position. Right. Another reason to have term limits. (laughs) There's just yet one more reason reason for term limits. And I don't know about you, but the whole blocking people just because thing really pisses me off. Because, you see, 
In my opinion, if someone is that crazy person who posts the most lunacy of things, you know, the most lunatic rants and whatever, blocking that person only accomplishes one thing. That's one less detractor to speak out against that person. They're now free, a little more free to speak how they want. Because let's face it, if you could predict how many people in a group were going to react negatively to a person's comment, and you knew that 70% were going to react negatively, uh-huh. you probably wouldn't say anything. You'd be quiet because you figure out of that 70%. Somebody else will speak up. But that's not the way to do it. The way to do it... All 70% need to speak up. All 70%. Make it overwhelming and tell that person. Because otherwise, even if you kick their ass in a debate, they leave thinking, well, I could have done better in that debate. But I still have all the support of all the people. Because that's what they truly think. Because most people... What do they always say? What's that saying? Silence is what? Acceptance. Silence is acceptance. You use it, I use it. Lots of people use it. But it's true. If you think about it, if I say to you, I'm going out that door right now. I'm going to go down to the car. I'm going to drive to the dog pound. And I'm going to take three dogs and bring them home. If you just look at me and smile and don't say anything, and I'm serious about doing that, we're going to have three more dogs tonight because silence is acceptance. <laughs> if you don't say no, don't do that, or let's talk about it, do we ever think to ourselves, oh, they didn't say anything. They must be against it. No. Because as we talked about in the car the other day, actually, I think it was today. The reason I say to you, that the naysayers don't ever bother me is because I know that for every one person that says something negative, there's at least a thousand people who think something positive about you. Well, of course, just look at look at the threads in the last couple of days that have been going on. There are so many people liking the comments and only two making negative comments. Come on now. Well, exactly. And it's the because the people, like I said to you, people think about this. If you go to the steak restaurant, let's say Outback, and you order a steak and the steak is good, do you seek out the manager and say, yo, dude, the steak tonight was so delicious? Of course you don't. It's very rare. If someone asks you as they're walking by, how was everything? You might right. tell them, oh, the steak was delicious. Or if the manager happens to cruise by, you may right. be like, yo. But you're not going to go seek him out to tell him that. But I'll tell you damn well. If the steak tastes terrible and is full of gristle and overcooked and undercooked in other places and where it's totally raw. To and to it took you. 45 minutes to get to you. You're going to say something to the manager. Because... Right. People like to complain more than they like to praise. Twice. And it's it's a sad thing that even as a parent, you have to remind yourself with your kids that it's really easy to say, you didn't brush your teeth, you didn't clean up your room, you didn't you didn't um, wash your face, you didn't wash your hair, you haven't taken a shower, blah, 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 blah. But what you have to turn around and recognize is when they do a project for school, you need to say to them, wow. You thought to tell me ahead of time to get the materials. That's awesome. And, oh, look how good that looks. You have to focus on the positive things, not the negative. And I'm not talking bullshit, people. I'm talking real compliments. You've got to do that with people. If you don't tell people, like just now, I was looking at your work that you did. And you've always been really good at the design. Art. Like you pick things up quickly about that when it comes to visual stuff. You even find things that are out of place really quickly. And I've told you that before. And so when you showed me what you showed me, the thought popped in my head, wow, she's even better now. And then I thought to myself, but what good does it do to think that if you don't tell her that she's doing even better now? And think about the difference. You know, I told you, wow, you've improved a lot. That made you feel good, right? But what yep. if I hadn't said anything? It wouldn't have made you feel bad, but you wouldn't have felt that good that you felt. I would have just felt... Nothing. It's just normal. Keep moving. <laughs> and that's yeah. and that's my point. Like, like you have to focus, especially the people you care about, 
on the positive aspects of your of your interpersonal relationship with them and not always just the things they're not doing and some people are so overly sensitive about the negatives too that then you create a huge argument that you don't mean to create right i mean that's one of the funny things like there's that movie called um fireproof and then in the book in the movie his dad gives him this journal that he used for a 40 day thing that he went through in order to save his marriage and it worked uh-huh um and and it's called the um love diary or something like that and the first the very first day what you're supposed to do and the whole I, the whole concept of this love diary is that it's one-sided the person doing it's called the love dare not the love diary the person doing the love dare is doing it without any expectation from the other person. You're not doing something and hoping they'll reciprocate. You're not going to give them a back rub and then expect them to give you a back rub. If they choose to, great. But if they choose not to, or if they stay angry at you, let's say it's two people that are angry at each other. If they stay angry at you, that's their choice. You just keep doing the positive things each day because eventually it gets through to them that, wow, I've been a real asshole for like a two weeks and this person, man or woman, has been doing all these nice things for me. How do I deserve this? And it softens them up and they start to be a little more introspective and then the problem gets solved. Make sense? Makes sense. You think and you the, told me about this And before. the very first thing is don't say anything negative, you know, about the person. Try to keep it positive. And guess what? Each day... You don't do away with the thing you did. You keep doing the thing you did and you add another thing. And the idea is that after, I think it was 40 days or 45 days, you've built up this like positive personality towards the other person. Well, given that it takes 21 days to create a habit, the first, if it's 45 days, the first 24 days will all be habit by the end. Yeah. And so I would guess the first 21 days, because, you know, habits, and all the people know about habits, would be more things like that, where you well, yeah, when it does don't say the, anything negative. Well, what it does towards the end of the book is it expands and it's like, find two positive things and tell your partner. Right. Things that you don't necessarily want to be an everyday habit. But the don't say right. anything negative should be... Be a habit but what it ends have. up doing is yeah. it teaches you the habit of not saying anything negative, but it also teaches you the habit of reinforcing that by saying something positive to the person. Right. Because like I just said, we don't think, let's be honest, there's only one reason why we don't go tell people how great the food is. We expect it to be great, number one. Actually, there's two reasons. And number two, nobody can be bothered to go say squat to other people when something's good or meets their expectations. Right. When did we become a society where we only point out the negatives and never point out the positives? Well, I've told you the story before, and maybe I've never told it on here, of, you know, working for restaurants on the run, and we've got this fax server that is in the new software that they just bought. And so what happened back then is they would get an order, it would come through on the screen, and they would say, all right. Let's send it to the restaurant now. They would send it as quickly as possible. And then it would queue it up and it would fax it to the restaurant via a fax machine. Well, what was happening, the fax machine would get so busy and because the code was written so poorly that it would overwhelm the fax server hardware. And you know what happens once the hardware gets overwhelmed. Weird crap happens. Well... The Chinese restaurant is receiving claim jumper orders. The Italian restaurant's receiving the Chinese food restaurant's orders. And claim jumper is getting requests for spaghetti that they don't serve. Okay? Stuff is going in the wrong place. And we have to eat it because it's our mistake. Right. So if they're too stupid and they make the food, we have to pay for it. And then customers get mad because, of course, the order is late. Etc, etc, etc. So me and this other guy, we each worked a solid 40-hour week. And in one week, we put out a new version of the fax server. Mm -hmm. 
very first day was tried out was Friday, the busiest night of the week. There's just something about the last day of the work week. People order food. They don't. Who wants to cook like after cooking. they've worked an entire week? It's why he was not a Friday. single issue. Not wow. any no bugs. Everything worked flawlessly because we worked as a team and talked it all through. Now, the one boss was ragging on us about one small little thing. I go, you know what sucks? We just spent 80 hours fixing a completely fucked up fax server. We put it out on the busiest night of the week, and it was flawless, and it has run flawlessly for three weeks, and they haven't even had to stop and restart it. That's how solid it is. And you don't say anything. Well, Mike, you see that light switch next to the door? Well, when I come in in the morning and I turn it on and the lights come on, I don't sit down and immediately call the electrician and give him kudos. Now, who can see the flaw in that comment as compared to the request that I was asking? I don't know, everybody. What do you see as the flaw? Well, there's a big difference between a light switch and a person doing a completely new job. Perhaps you should give the electrician kudos after he's just finished wiring the building. Correct. He's comparing future use. It's not like I put the fax server out. He gave me kudos for, wow, that's the best software launch we've ever had. We've never had a completely flawless software launch. Good job. And a year later, I'm going, well. It's still working. It's still working. Where's my kudos? That's what he's talking about. Yeah, I bet you if he was having a building built and he was moving in and he flipped his office light on and the lights didn't come on, he'd call the electrician and complain, wouldn't he? Yes. And if he happened to be there and the electrician came to collect his money, turn in an invoice and get paid, he'd probably say, hey, nice job on the wiring. It was quick. The junction boxes are clean and cut in nicely. Good job. I'm sure he would. Right. But of course he's not going to call every day after that and be like, oh, yep, the lights are still working. Yeah, because the electrician would think you were all lunatic. So what's wrong with people that they say stuff like that or they do stuff like that or they have expectations like that? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm all for expecting people to do their job correctly and all that good stuff. But... If there have been issues and somebody goes above and beyond to fix them, you say thank you. And you say good job. Sorry. You do. Well, especially since I left out one part. It was scheduled to be a two-week project. Yeah. But we busted our butt and got it done in one week. And that's another part that's amazing. There were no um, code repositories. There was no source control per se then. We had to split the project in two and then merge everything back together, prime ripe for bugs, and yet no bugs because we were so careful to do it the right way. It's just crazy. <laughs> just crazy. But that's my rant for tonight. I don't have much else to say. I'm that was like out. six different rants. Yes. All it rolled into one. It really was. That's okay, though. Now it's time for bed. So. You think so? I do think so. All right, then. Well, good night, everyone. Hasta la bye bye. Hi, everyone. This is Mike, and I truly hope you enjoyed this show. You're able to subscribe to this show on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher so as to never miss an episode. If by chance you did miss an episode here or there, you can catch up on all shows, past and present, by heading over to Yogi's Podcast Network dot com forward slash TNR show. Thanks for listening.